Welcome to a new episode of Raspberry on a Boat and today we will take a look at a dashboard, a note read for yeah, a berth for your sailboat or just to get weather data, webcams and other information on one screen to get it all together to get a good overview. It was a little bit more work than I thought at the beginning. You see all the notes here. So we will do this in two parts, step by step. So the first data we want to grab is from a page in Germany, which is called uh, Pegel Online. So it gives you the level of the water for whole of Germany and it has a powerful REST API, which helps us a lot. So you can select here on their internet page some levels and get unfortunately no forecast, but just the current and maybe the past values. However, that's already nice that you can get the current uh, water level value. It might be also available in your country. You need to search for some sources. We will take a look at different sources. For example, this one here is for my local spot. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't offer a REST API. So here it's more tricky to get the data, but it's possible. They also have some graphs which we can grab and put it directly on the dashboard. But we start with this one because this one has, so with this uh, AP, REST API based one, because you can see it offers a lot of commands to get in a JSON format that's great for Node Red, um, like this, all the information we want. What we will do now is take a look how this looks in Node Red, how to get the information, and then for a single spot, we will grab the current level and bring it to our dashboard. Um, yeah, you can do this here directly, search for the spot you want to grab, or you do this in Node Red. Um, yeah, both is possible. So Node Red has an inbuilt uh, function for HTTP request, which is also working, of course, for HTTPS. And um, we will take a timestamp trigger node, which we trigger now manually, and we start with a debug node to see what will be uh, forwarded from our HTTP request point. I will call this now, uh, in, like this page was called, so that's German word for the level, of the water and let's copy the first command. This command will grab all available stations. Um, we could just paste it here. We will take the default settings first and take a look what will be presented and we get a long string. It's so long that we can't see it in our debug node completely and it would be a hell of work to work with that. Uh, fortunately, this is JSON, so we can change this to a JSON object now. So I changed this to a JSON object, and when we do it now, we get an array with a lot of um, separated informations for different stations. It doesn't make sense now to go all through the stations. I will take one example for one specific station. Uh, this station is not my hometown, um, but we can just paste this here for trying it. And let's see what comes out now. And we get just one object with some numbers, timestamp, the value in centimeters, uh, st state if this is normal, high or low, and if it's available a trend. So in which direction will it go, up, down, or will it stay even? What we need now is the dashboard node, which is not installed by default, but we had this in many tutorials already. We start with the gauge. We um, take uh, the value, that's what we want to grab. Um, we need a UI group, of course, so where to place it, and that's an empty uh, node right here, so I have to create a new UI group. First, a complete tab, which we call now um, how, how we called it, birth uh, dashboard. And 
Afterwards, I need a widget group and we start with uh, Pegel Online, so the one where we get the data from. We can already try to find a good range. I'm not sure what range is uh, typical for that region. Let's take 150 to yeah, maybe 300. You can set all the other things on your own. I think that's not important now. Let's take a look and open the dashboard. And we can see hopefully, oh, we see that the value is wrong because we have the full, so we had it set to value and that's a full payload and it expects just one value, but we can simply change that and just go to the object value, which is part of our JSON object and we get the 300, uh, 231 centimeters. Um, and maybe we could put a label on top and we should change the unit to centimeters so that everybody knows which unit this should be. And that looks already nice and we already have the level of the water of this region. What we also can do is change of course to another widget which looks maybe a bit better for a level like this one. It's already called level so this should fit. And what we also can do is we, we know that we had a timestamp in our um, JSON object and we could put another label but we can also just use this timestamp as a label here. So we, I will copy the value format because that's already nearly the same but just timestamp at the end and now the label is timestamp. Um, and that means, let's take a look, that the current timestamp is set as a label for our widget. Now let's assume we want to take a webcam which is existing somewhere. So I have a page here with some webcams. I can open this one in a new tab and I see it's just this one picture and I copy the path for this picture now. And in node red uh, we can use the template node. That's a UI node which yeah, offers a little bit um, yeah, customized uh, possibilities. I already created a webcam group. I call this one webcam now. This is just for my own documentation. And now um, we can use HTML code here in the template node and we will just use the image source uh, command here uh, and the copied path of our webcam. And let's take a look what happens now. When we start on triggered again, okay, must be connected, of course, we should see the webcam picture on our dashboard. Maybe it's a little bit too small. And then you can use HTML style commands, CSS style commands, for example, width um, to change the width here. So uh, you can use pixel, you can also use percentage, I think, but let's start in pixel. So this didn't change anything. Let's uh, put a, maybe it was not enough. So I increased this to 900 and try this again. Ah, okay, no, we did a mistake. Of course you need to, because I removed this at the beginning, you need to uh, highlight or mark this as a CSS style area. I will change this now to a CSS styled area. And we try it again and now you see that the size has changed. But you can scroll it and if you want to prevent scrolling you can simply add some further commands in CSS style uh, and this one is the style command and when you put in that you uh, don't want to allow overflow or you want to hide it you, the sc scroll bar should be gone. And the scroll bar is gone. However, you see that the picture is cropped and uh, I wanted to show you that the dashboard has a lot of style elements and especially for such pictures you need more space and you can change the complete group to a wider frame, 14 for example, and now the, uh, uh, it fits. However, just remember now it's set to auto, sometimes uh, then it's cropped in height and you might uh, change also the element itself not to auto. Yeah, that's a possibility um, to get a webcam picture. You can also use the HTTP request 
to download this picture that is also working. So you copy the path, you use HTTP request again, put it in. You should put it as a binary buffer object uh, so that you really can create a JPEG or PNG or whatever it is afterwards by saving it with the file um, node. Why did I tell that? It is important sometimes because if you do a direct link like we did it, uh, the browser might cache the information and you get no updates. When you download the file each time, um, you should usually uh, yeah, fool the browser and get updates. Usually the webcam name must change always, but then we have a problem with downloads. So that would be one possibility. Of course, you can use the same method also to yeah, download other pictures like this one on the upper right. This one is also from a German page which forecasts the level of water. Um, and I just directly downloaded it and edit it. You can use the historic or the chart for your level. That's um, just a note red element. You know this one. We had this in several, de uh, in several tutorials already. So where you can use this one here um, on the same source like we used it for the level itself, but it will just do the historic way. And then we have these tables, and this is something we never discussed so far. And the tables are really interesting, but a little bit complicated, um, or at least I need more time to explain that. So that's something for part number two, and also how to get this data from other sources, uh, HTML pages, not only REST APIs. Okay, you can try to play with that, I think. And see you on the next one.